Todd Vander Hayden is in Ottawa on Parliament Hill. Todd, quite a day at the nation's capital today. Indeed it is, Mitz. Uh, hundreds, thousands of people have come out here hoping to catch a glimpse of Barack Obama as he makes his first foreign trip to Canada as the new U.S. president. Obama arrived here just about 20 minutes ago. He turned, waved to the crowd behind bulletproof glass, and the crowd went wild. Uh, hundreds of people hoping to catch a glimpse to be part of history. You can appreciate, though, that security was very, very tight here for the president's first foreign trip. His safety paramount for the RCMP and the Canadian government here. We mentioned the bulletproof glass. Uh, the garbage cans were removed from Parliament Hill. The manhole covers were sealed. There were helicopters circling above uh, for this trip. Uh, he will be meeting with Canadian leaders, the Prime Minister, the Governor General, leader of the opposition. Bear in mind, this is not an official state visit. This is just a meet and greet. The President will only be in Canada for six and a half hours. His plane landed at Ottawa International Airport at about 10.20 this morning. Uh, there was not a lot of pomp and circumstance, as is customary for Barack Obama's style. Very laid back. He got off Air Force One on his own. There was what they call a welcome guard by Mounties, not an official honor guard because it's not an official state visit. He met with the governor general. They had a laugh as they walked into the tarmac, met with her. And then his motorcade came here to Parliament Hill. With more on the morning's events, here's CTV's Roger Smith. As Barack Obama left Washington on his first foreign trip as president, the Canadian welcome was already waiting. A hearty few staking out their places on Parliament Hill long before dawn. Because we want to see the first black president of the United States. We're the first people here since 4.30 o'clock. 4.30 in the morning. We're so tired. I haven't slept. Came from Toronto. It's an event that we'll be able to tell our friends, our family, our children. So it's fantastic to be here. But the turnout, smaller than expected, perhaps because of the snow, because of the heavy security, can I get you just to open your jacket for me, please? And because of the advance warnings, they might not even get a peek of the president. When the president touched down, the official welcome was warm but low-key. In keeping with the protocol of this working visit, there was less of the pomp and pageantry that would mark a state visit. Obama met briefly at the airport with Mikhail Jean, America's first black president and Canada's first black governor general, both of them all smiles. Then it was into his bulletproof limo nicknamed the Beast, the motorcade speeding downtown as police sharpshooters on the rooftops kept an eye out for any threats. And the swelling crowd on the hill got more than they bargained for. After the presidential limo arrived, Obama went inside to greet the prime minister. Then the two of them came back outside to wave to the crowd. A brief public moment before the leaders got down to business behind closed doors. Roger Smith, CTV News, Ottawa. And as I mentioned, when Obama and Stephen Harper turned to the crowd, as Roger just talked about in his report, everybody went wild. There was not really any word or not whether we would actually see Obama, but he did, in fact, a brief greeting, a brief wave to the crowd. Uh, no public address is expected. Obama will not be talking to Parliament either. There is a VIP reception tonight at uh, around 4 o'clock at the airport, just before he leaves for Washington. But besides that, not a lot of uh, public interaction with Obama to speak of. That didn't stop, though, hundreds of people from coming down here to Parliament Hill. Uh, at one point, there were probably well over 2,000 people down here on Parliament Hill and uh, right across the lawn. We met a group of Montrealers who came here this morning, got up at 7 o'clock in the morning, got on board a bus. That's them off to the side of me now, uh, all to catch a glimpse of Obama. And here's a closer look at what some of they, what they had to say. You put a hope out there because we need hope because of what is happening in the world today. It's hope that is going to give us the fuel to move forward, to achieve the goals and the things that we need to achieve and so we can live harmoniously with each other. To see Barack Obama as uh, the first black president of the United States and um, I think it's amazing to be here because I'm French and uh, I'm here for holidays and to be uh, in such an event is is great because it made me take a better look at myself and i think i did it for a lot of people that are here today and that are benefiting from soaking some of this thing so soaking some of it in and seeing what they can do themselves to make a change right it only starts with one man but individually if we all make a change ourselves i think all in all that's pretty much the point 
And as we speak, President Obama is meeting with Stephen Harper, a one on one meeting inside the Prime Minister's office. The big question will be what will they be discussing? They're going to have a meeting alone, then they're going to be meeting with a larger group of officials. Obviously, trade and the economy are big issues with the U.S. perhaps moving towards more of a protectionist uh, attitude in light of the stimulus bill that was signed by Barack Obama, the world recession, but also issues about energy, the Alberta oil sands, and of course, Canada's involvement in Afghanistan. We're fortunate to have one of our longtime political analysts, Elian McDonald, here with us on Parliament Hill. Thanks for coming out. Nice to be with you, Todd. Good thing it's not minus 15 out here right now. You know, any president of the United States, especially this one, attracts a crowd and every interest group you can think of, from the right to lifers to the peace activists to Aboriginal Canadians, they're all here. So what's the message that Stephen Harper has to get across as Canada's Prime Minister to Barack Obama today? As always, that we are America's closest neighbour, uh, largest trading partner, staunchest ally and best friend. As President Kennedy famously said here in 1961, geography has made us, uh, geography has made us neighbors, and history has made us friends. And economics has made us partners, and necessity has made us allies. That's the template uh, for the relationship in the in the post-war period. Uh, it's interesting that the Governor General had a half hour with. Uh, uh, got, they seemed to get along very Obama well at the airport this morning. As a working visit, there was no need for her to be there, but uh, obviously there is the compelling nature of their two personal narratives, summed up by his campaign motto: Yes we can. As she is a descendant of, of slaves from Haiti and he, he is married to the descendant of a slave. So that's a very compelling personal narrative that would have justified her being there for and clearly they did hit it off. What's your take on how these two governments will get along? Because as you know Stephen Harper tended to be more allied with perhaps the Bush administration. Uh, Harper uh, perhaps a, a more of a difficult relationship with Barack Obama. Well that's interesting in that you know he's a Obama's a liberal Democrat and of the left on the American political spectrum but that can be not very far from the center right in Canada. For example, on Afghanistan, he's promised to shift the focus from Iraq to Afghanistan, and just the other day announced he was sending 17,000 more American troops. We asked the U.S. and NATO to step up as a condition with another thousand troops, as a condition of our staying on until 2011. But then Harper announced in the middle of our campaign that he that we were leaving the neighborhood and the country in 2011. So how will that part of the conversation go? Uh, that'll all be over the working lunch in the Senate Speaker's dining room, a beautiful Tudor dining room over here in the center block, where they'll be accompanied by officials that will not be a one-on-one. -on -one. The one-on-one -on -one is going on now in the PM's office over there on the third floor. Elia McDonald, thanks very much. Thank Always a pleasure. We'll be talking to you again. All right. So as Elia mentioned, the Prime Minister and the President are meeting right now in the hall inside of the Prime Minister's office on the third floor in the Parliament buildings. And so, Mitz, although our cameras are not allowed there, we will be hearing more about that meeting later on this afternoon. Well, I guess we shouldn't be surprised we didn't get an invitation, right, Todd? True enough. And I guess it's going to be a very busy afternoon for the President. You can imagine five hours until he actually leaves Canada, so it's chocker block full. Uh, meetings with officials, meetings with the Prime Minister. There's a news conference that CTV will be broadcasting live here on the main network uh, just after 2.30 uh, when the President and the Prime Minister come out. A very short news conference. They'll give uh, quick comments and answer a few questions. And then the Prime Minister and the President will say goodbye and Barack Obama will head back to the airport. He'll have a one-on-one -on -one with Michael Ignatiev as leader of the opposition. Ignatiev has ties to some people inside the Obama administration from his former days at Harvard. Then there's that reception I mentioned, 500 VIPs. By 5 o'clock, Barack Obama heads on to Air Force One and heads back to Washington. He should be there by 7 o'clock tonight, back home in time for supper. And as for us, we'll be here at 6 o'clock with more on the President's historic visit to Canada. Mitz, back to you, Montreal. Okay, so we'll see you again later at 6, Todd. Thank you very we much. We will, Mitz. Bye-bye.